Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, I'd like to talk with you about the importance of coming to church, of assembling as God's people, of seeing each other face to face. Should the church do that? And especially in times of crisis or a pandemic like we're seeing now, or how about this? How about if the government should forbid you to come and meet together as a church? Should the church meet even then? How essential is it for us to meet as the church, to assemble, to be here actually in person, and to meet face to face? I mean, can we just stay at home and watch videos forever? Is that good enough? Well, today let's take a look and see what we can learn about the importance of coming together face to face and what God teaches us about that in his word, the Bible, for our help and encouragement. And first of all, if we think about coming together as a church uh, face to face, Let's remember that the church is not actually a building. It's a people. You know, we often say things like, uh, I'm going to church, or Beth, I'll be there in 10 minutes. I'll be at church in 10 minutes. Obviously, we talk like that sometimes, and that's okay in a sense, but really, literally, biblically, the church is not a building. It is the people of God. When we come together face to face, that's the church. Let's read about that in second, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Just Paul is starting his letter to the church, Paul. And he says in verse 2, To the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So when Paul is writing that to the church, he's obviously not, not speaking to a building, right? He's not writing to stones and wood. He's writing to human beings. He's writing to the assembled people of God who are meeting together. So the church, which people makes up the church? Answer, all those who are true Christians, who are truly saved through faith in Jesus' name, that is the church. We hear in another place in the Bible that the church is the household of God. It's the church of the living God, the pillar and bulwark of the truth. And where does the church meet? Well, uh, in the ancient times, the church obviously didn't have church buildings, but we read in Acts chapter 2, they met in the temple and in people's homes. We read in Acts chapter 2, verse uh, 44, uh, it says, and all who believed were together. Say the word together. together. That's what we're talking about. They were together, had all things in common. And then verse 46, and day by day attending the temple together, say it again, together, together and breaking bread in their homes, they partook of food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. So when we talk about coming together as a church, you can do that in the temple in Jerusalem when there was one. You can do it in houses because a lot of the early church, it was basically just meeting in houses. We read in the churches of uh, Asia send greetings, 1 Corinthians 16. Aquila and Prisca together with the church in their house send you hearty greetings in the Lord. So that's the church when you're meeting in a house or in the temple or in a church building, because when Christianity got established, we got buildings like we have here, and then you can come together here for church. But it's not to a building. The church isn't the building. The people is the building. The point is believers coming together in one place. That is the church, be it in a temple, a building, or a house. Now, how many people does it take to make a church? where two or three are gathered in my name, Jesus says, there I am in the midst of them. And so that's a church. Two or three believers in one place is the local church. 
Now, you can be in church as a Christian, even if you're not with other believers, because in the larger sense, in the grand sense, if you're in Jesus Christ and you are saved in him, you're always in church because wherever you are, you're in Jesus Christ. But in the narrower sense, which we're talking about today, it is being in that local place where God meets his people, where two or three or more are gathered together in his name. That's actually the church. As we read in 1 Corinthians eleven eighteen. when you come together as a church, so it's us coming together, meeting face to face uh, to worship God and be together. And the church has done this for 2,000 years without fail. But now to the question for today, should the church still assemble, come together, meet face to face in a crisis or a pandemic like we have here, COVID-19 today, or when the government should order you not to meet? Should the church meet face to face even then? This is an important question for us to ask today and all Christians, because it's not just a theological idea, it's a question we've got to answer today, and everybody's got to know it. And God's going to give us the answer in Jesus Christ, in the Bible. So should we? Well, to start out, I'd like to say that I understand that there are uh, differences of opinion among Christians on this. Let's take a look at two sides of it. On the one hand, you have, this would be an example of the one side. This is John MacArthur out there in California. You've heard what's happening to him. He's one of the more famous megachurch uh, radio personalities. Uh, very biblical, uh, for the most, well, a biblical conservative guy. And he has been ordered by the government of California that you shall not meet. There are no indoor church services allowed. And he has said, we're meeting anyway. And so they have many lawsuits going on there, but he's meeting anyway. And his uh, reason for that, he quotes Acts chapter five. He says, basically, God's commanded us to meet and we must obey God rather than men. For when the council charged, uh, strictly charged Peter and the rest that you shall not teach in Jesus' name, Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than men. And so he quotes, MacArthur quotes, we must obey God rather than men. God's commanded us to meet, therefore we meet and face to face in defiance of our orders if need be. That's the one side. So those who say, it's time to come together to meet face-to-face -face in church. Then you have the other side. Could be represented by this guy. His name is Andy Stanley. He uh, runs North Point Community Church in Alpharetta, Georgia, which is a suburb of Atlanta. Another mega church pastor. Uh, and he actually has closed his church for the rest of the year. No meeting, no personal in-person, face-to-face meeting to worship God. It's all going to be done by video. And he says his reasoning for it is love because he says we have these uh, uh, warnings or, or social guidelines and social distancing and we can't meet those things. We can't guarantee everybody will be safe and therefore no face-to-face -face meetings until this crisis is over which is January 2021, but if the COVID numbers from the CDC remain high, they will remain closed and could be closed indefinitely. No more church for a year or more. So these are obviously two mega churches and they're the two sides, but it's the same thing for little and smaller churches too. The one side says, come and come now. The other side says, we will not come, or it's not time to come. And so, which is right? Which of the two of these? Should the church meet face to face, even in a crisis or a pandemic or when the government orders you not to? Well, let me answer that by saying, first, I can understand to a certain degree anyway, both positions. You know, if uh, uh, I certainly understand that God commands us to meet, of course that one's right. 
On the other side, I can see if there really is a pandemic and people are going to drop dead like flies all around you and it's sweeping through your city, you could close for a little while to stem the tide of the virus. I could see how that could be a loving thing to do for a little time, not for a whole year, but a little time, weeks or a month perhaps. So I understand both positions there. And I also want to say before I really answer this question that if we have anybody in our church who is elderly, <clears throat> most people, <laughs> and if they actually have debilitating health concerns and they don't want to come out right now because they're concerned about their health, I totally get that. I don't condemn that. That's okay if they just want to participate at home for the time being, watching the messages uh, by video, there is some benefit to that. And so that's okay, I get it. But now, apart from that specific exception, I wanna address the question. Should the church here and at large across the country and the world start meeting again face to face in this crisis? And the answer, from scripture and from God is, I believe, yes. Categorical, yes. Face to face. And why is that? Well, let me give you some reasons. Number one, because God indeed does command us to meet together, to come and not forsake meeting together to the end of time. Let's read that actually in uh, Hebrews. Where'd my Bible go? There it is. In Hebrews chapter 10, in verse 25, it says this, Do not neglect to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encourage one another, and all the more, as you see the day drawing near. So what do we learn from that verse? Number one, we learn that we are commanded to meet. Do not neglect to meet together. Don't forsake that. Meet. That's a command. The second thing we learn is that it has a purpose for our encouragement, but encouraging one another. So we need to encourage each other in the, face, in, the, in the faith, face to face, so that we don't fail or fall away, but that we stay alive and lit in our light to enter triumphantly into the kingdom all the way to the end. And thirdly, we learn in this verse that we are to meet together for our encouragement until the end of time, because it says, as you see the day, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. What day? Which day is he talking about? The day of the Lord, the day of Jesus' return to earth. And so we're supposed to be meeting until Jesus comes back. And as we're waiting for Jesus to come back, are we going to go through trials, crises, terrifically difficult times? Well, the scripture speaks everywhere about that. Jesus says of those last days, there will be great tribulation, such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now and never will be. And if those days had not been shortened, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. So notice we're supposed to be meeting face to face, not neglecting that, even through great tribulation. Uh, such that even you wonder if anybody's going to be saved, that kind of tribulation, face-to-face -face meeting, encouraging each other until that day. And therefore, Jesus here is commanding us, you are to meet together even in crises. Especially, it says, all the more as you see the day drawing near. Especially in troubled times that you might encourage each other through it, that you hold fast the faith and stay alert and can then at my coming, enter triumphantly and richly into my kingdom by the gates. And so that we might persevere in the faith to the end and not fall away. So the number one reason then so far is because simply God has commanded us to meet and for good purposes. Second reason that the church today needs to get meeting face to face pronto and immediately is because there is a war on against the church. Haven't you seen that? Have you perceived that? Yeah. 
when you look around at the whole situation and you've seen how liquor stores are staying open and, and casinos can have more people than churches by law and abortion clinics are open and yet churches are disallowed from meeting and having lots of people or even in California forbidding singing is verboten. You have to speak German because it's like Nazi Germany, right? Yeah, there is a war on in these days against the church as there always has been, but we see it all the more in our country these days. An evil agenda afoot against the church. And so we need to discern in each crisis that we might face, such as the present one, is it a real crisis over a virus or is there something else going on here? And, you know, John MacArthur, I'll show him, show you him, he's out there, he's been meeting in the crisis for some time, but even he, like us, he closed down his church for about eight weeks or so because he thought it was a real pandemic. People are going to die, drop dead like flies all around him. And so for love, he also just did videos like we did for a little while. But then he says, the reason he started meeting again and holding church is he looked around and it just was not happening as he had been told it was supposed to happen. So they started to research these things and he looked up the number of deaths per 100,000 people in California because he's from LA area over the last 10 years. And he found out that this year they have 15 more people per 100,000 than average years in California that have died. In other words, there's really no difference this year in how many people have died than every other year for the last 10 years. He says, if that is indeed the case, then there is no pandemic. I mean, people die and some die from COVID-19, but it is not a pandemic. People aren't dying everywhere, all over the place. 15 more people per 100,000. He says, then it is safe enough to have church. Namely, he's told the media, on a news uh, interview, we just don't believe the media's narrative anymore. So he's had about 3,000 people coming to his church on Sundays. They have no cases. They have no hospitalizations, no deaths. And he says, you know, you're never going to be 100% safe because this is just a, a world where there are troubles and people do die. That's just part of this world. And yet it's safe enough to meet. He even quoted what I said to you last week. Uh, here's the report again from the CDC.gov where they say right here, CDC says 6% of the deaths reported for COVID-19 are actually directly from COVID and 94% of them are not. So 94% of what we've heard has been from at least other causes. And so you're never going to be 100% safe, but safe enough to freely have those come who want to come. So he's been meeting and he was told just this week uh, from the court, because he's argued back and forth with lawsuits, that he's not permitted to meet by law. And he was asked, what are you going to do? He says, we're meeting anyway. Because in California, as I said, inside church services are verboten. They are forbidden. And so also singing. You are not allowed to sing in California. Yeah, da. The Fuhrer, no, the, the, the governor has said such a thing. What is this, Nazi Germany? You can't sing in California? Many Christians are saying, you have no right to say that. We will meet and sing to our Lord, the Lord, and they do. And so, secondly, we need to meet because there is a war on right now against the church. We need to stand up and fight. And we, in our church, have been meeting since mid-May, as you know. We, too, weigh the danger. Statista.com in Florida, I just looked it up this week, as of September 7th, uh, just a few days ago, in Florida, the number of deaths per 100,000 were 55 people. So out of our, every 100,000 Floridians, 55 people have died. So the death rate is 0 0.05. Should we not meet then? Is that too risky? Is that too dangerous? Uh, the danger, and here's the big point, is I think the real danger is in not coming. And that's for point number three here. Third reason that we need to meet as a face-to-face -face church here and everywhere in the world 
is because it is not good for our health not to. Because even from just a human way of speaking, isolation for too long from other human beings is just plain not good for your health. It's destructive to your health. If you stay away and isolate, as some people have for weeks and then weeks and then weeks, some haven't even come out of their home for this whole time, hardly. If you do that for too long, you will soon come ill from another disease called the anguish of heart. Because the Bible even bears witness to this, that people need people and face-to-face -face relationships for their health. In fact, look at it in Scripture here. 2 John, verse 12. John writes, Though I have much to write to you, I would rather not use paper and ink, but I hope to come to see you and talk with you face to face so that our joy may be complete. Isn't that great? I mean, he's, here he's saying, instead of even giving you scripture, I could write more scripture for you, but it's better that you see me face to face. It's even better than scripture or a video, if you will, that we meet face to face. He says the same thing in his third letter. I hope to see you soon and we will talk together face to face. It's very important. In 2 Corinthians 7, Paul says, even when we came into Macedonia, our bodies had no rest, but we were afflicted at every turn, fighting without and fear within. So he was in a crisis, amen? This was a very troubling situation. Verse 6, but God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus. In other words, oh, we were so distressed, but now we've seen his face and his presence and his his joy and, and just his person here face to face were so relieved and that was God's work. So we need people and faces. In Acts 20, Paul was going to see the Ephesus church for the very last time and he was passing by. They actually traveled down to a town near him, got together with him on the beach as he was passing. And when he had spoken thus, he knelt down and prayed with them all on the beach, the elders. And they all wept and embraced Paul and kissed him sorrowing most of all because of the word that he had spoken that they should see his face no more. And they brought him to the ship. So, so what was the thing with them? They could have still gotten letters from him, but their great sorrow was, but we won't get to see your face anymore. It's so important, according to the Bible, for us to see each other's faces. And if you wear a mask, that's okay. I don't condemn that. Just wear a mask. That's great. But uh, let's see each other's faces. We need it to be happy. Babies immediately latch on to the face of their mothers and study it curiously, every detail, and are fascinated. And so also the parents study with fascination the face of their child. It's how we're wired. The baby doesn't go after teddy bears, but to the mother's living face. And... Uh, uh, Face-to-face -face meeting is so important to our health. We need it in order to be healthy. And not only do we need faces, but we need touch. <laughs> we need to actually touch each other. Do you know that the media today has trained, like the world, to fear touching everything? Isn't that true? It's like that Bugs Bunny cartoon. Don't touch the filthy money, Finsta. You know, you're afraid to touch me, or you're told that because, oh no, it might contain the virus. You could die if you touch money. And then they come along and, and say, and don't touch that fruit at Publix without a glove and spray it down because it could have a virus. You could die if you touch fruit. And then especially they put this over to human beings. Don't touch another human being. You must stay at least six feet apart lest you also die. You know what? That's going to kill people because we need touch with each other. But they say, stay away, stay away. No faces, no touches, six feet at least into the dreadful future. Come on. I mean, if you think about it, Beth is in Boston, right? She's had a surgery this week and I didn't go up because of Massachusetts quarantine rules. 
So Beth and I have been talking on the phone, as you might imagine, every day, text, calling each other every day. But think of it. If I told Beth, you know, hey, this is great. Uh, calling and texting, that's enough. You needn't come home, stay there, the arrangement's fine. Let me ask you, would that be love? Why then is that good enough for the church? We need to touch each other. A uh, British TV medical show Beth was watching, I watched with her, she, uh, we saw one episode that something jumped out at me. There was an elderly woman in very critical condition uh, being taken on the helicopter to the hospital in critical condition. The EMT told the cameraman filming it, you know, the touch, and he held the woman's hand. He says, the touch is more powerful than all the medicine we can give her put together. And he's found that to be true. He, because the touch, holding her hand, tells her, you are not alone. I am with you. I will not leave you. You will be okay. We need that kind of touch today in the church, lest if we don't get it, we come ill and die from the lack of touch. So come together, O church, for your health. You need it to live. And then fourthly, that really leads to the great, great point for today, is that we need to come together face to face as a church because the real danger is in not coming because in not coming, we're not getting touched by God and we're not touching God. That's the real touch that we need. You know, uh, God is always with you, even if you're not in a group of Christians and he touches you, sure, but he does it in a special way when we come together. The devil works to divide and conquer us. He wants us isolated. Just as if you were a fish in the sea and you swim away from the school, you become food for the shark. Or if you're in the forest meadow and you're a deer and you wander away from the herd isolated, you become a meal for the wolves. So also the Christian who stays isolated from other believers for too long will become prey for the devil. The Bible says, Peter says, be alert, your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith. But how are you gonna be firm in your faith without the church face-to-face -face meeting and the live preaching of the word? You need God's special touch, we all do. For it's here in the church that God has specially promised to meet you and to touch you and be touched by you. For in the Old Testament, they were told in Exodus 29, it's at the door of the tent of meeting before the Lord, in the tabernacle that is, there is where I will meet you to speak there to you, God told Moses. So there was a location where God met his people in the Old Testament. And where is it in the New Testament? Where two or three are gathered there. I am in the midst of them. You think you're going to come together at a church and God's going to destroy you for it? Or is he going to touch you and heal you and give you the healing that you need? Not only from the virus, but from everything. It's here he touches you through the preached word. It's here in the sermon that you hear, in effect, Jesus saying, see my hands and my feet, uh, that is I myself, handle me and see for a spirit has not flesh and bones as you see that I have. Here you hear him say, I died and behold, I'm alive forevermore and I have the keys of death and Hades. I can set you free. Here he touches us and here we see his face because it is God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We see God through Jesus Christ, his face here. And you know, his touch, his face is what we really need because there is a pandemic in the world today, the real pandemic. It's called sin. And 
It is worldwide and at large in the world. And the real mortality rate is written in the Bible. The soul that sins shall die. And again, the wages of sin is death. It's going to be 100% fatality rate for that virus. And it's not just death, but the second death, the lake of fire, which is hell and darkness forever. But here in the church, you meet God. He touches you with the one antidote, the one remedy, which is the saving gospel of Jesus Christ preached to you here every Sunday and many times also through the week for your salvation. That God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And we need to be strong in that all the way through till his coming. And faith comes from what is heard. And what is heard comes by the preaching of Christ. So I would say, or really rather God says to the churches today, both ours and in the world, come together. It's time to come to face-to-face -face fellowship pronto, for it is your very life. What? Think about it. Is God going to slay us with a virus for coming to worship him? <laughs> or strike us dead for being so bold as to lift up our voices in song to him and worship of his holy name? Come on. Have we forgotten who it is we've come here to serve? The God who has the power to kill and to make alive, to wound or give a sickness and to heal. He's going to bless you abundantly for coming, opening the windows of heaven and pouring out for you an overflowing blessing and protecting you not only from viruses, but saving you from the virus of sin through the salvation of Christ. Therefore, come see each other face to face touch each other's hands, encourage each other, and then go and wash away in the bathroom or whatever. That's fine. But let God touch you. For soon, very soon, you will also see his face. His face. For it's written that Jesus is coming, which is coming quickly and swiftly. At that day, there shall no more be anything accursed, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall worship him, and they shall see his face. They shall see his face. His name shall be on their foreheads, and the Lord God will be their light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Amen.